people keep looking to Constantinople for, for help, for a counter offensive, and nothing ever happens. And the reason for that, one way to explain the astonishing collapse of the empire uh, is that emperors in Constantinople are completely and utterly concentrated on Constantinople. And some of them don't even care what's happening around them. They become very myopic. Uh, the best example of this I can think of is an emperor uh, in the year 820. His name was Leo V. And Leo V had a buddy by the name of Michael. He couldn't speak very well. His nickname is Michael the Stammerer. Um, but the two of them were, were close friends. They uh, murdered the, previous, the emperor, and Leo was crowned emperor. His friend Michael was a big talker, and he kept saying things like, you know what, I should be emperor. And uh, they thought, kill Leo. He's not showing me the respect he needs. Word eventually reached Leo that his friend Michael was, was saying these things. So he told them to tone it down. But they were friends, so he said, just look, just stop saying things like that. Michael, of course, was unable to stop doing things like that. It's the kind of man he was. And eventually he was, on Christmas Eve of 820, he was dragged in front of Leo the, the fifth, and Leo's asked him point blank, did you say that you were going to plot to kill him? And to his great surprise, instead of denying, Michael said, yeah. <laughs> Not a good strategy for a long life. Uh, and Leo flew into a rage, and he said, immediately, you're going to be executed. But you know, normal execution is too good for you. Uh, you should be tied to an ape and thrown into the furnace. Uh, an ape? <laughs> were, were apes that common? Uh, you just have an emperor wants an ape, then go run and get an ape, number one. Number two, isn't really that a waste of a good ape? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's really happening here, this is a throwback to ancient Roman, and I'm talking about Republican Rome, ancient Roman days. The ancient Romans, if you were guilty of parasite or fratricide, you were sentenced to death by being sewn into a sack. First you'd get beaten so that you were bleeding. And then you'd get sewn inside a sack with a rooster, a viper, and a monkey. And then you were thrown into the river Tiber. And the reason why they did this was because you're supposed to be humiliated with these shrieking animals. Uh, death, you know, it's, it's just it's too good for you. You need to be humiliated as well. <coughs> well, so poor Michael is dragged away. But before he's executed, and thank you for the aid, <coughs> Uh, the wife of Leo says, Leo, you don't want to do this. It's Christmas Eve. The holiest day in the Christian year is uh, Christmas. You'll be receiving the sacrament. You cannot receive the sacrament with the blood of this man on your hands. Just execute him after Christmas. <laughs> Leo said, all right, sent him down to prison. He was shackled so he couldn't get out. But Leo just couldn't get it out of his mind. So in the middle of the night, he snuck down. And he looked, and what did he see? The jail was asleep, and Michael was asleep. And this enraged him, because he figured Michael should be up, being repentant, he should be crying, he should just be sleeping like he's a clear conscience. So he vows, he said, I'll not only kill you, I'll kill the jailer as well, who's falling asleep. And then he leaves. Now, unbeknownst to him, there was a little boy uh, hiding underneath the cot where Michael I don't know what these prisons are. Kind of, you can just go in. <laughs> but the, uh, the boy had seen the, just the feet. He, he'd never really seen the emperor, but he knew it was the emperor because the emperor was wearing purple boots. And the only person who could wear purple boots was the emperor. There's actually a case of a uh, rebel who was taken to the emperor's presence. He was surrendered. And the emperor said, he was wearing his purple boots. And the emperor said, I will not even look at you until you take off those boots. So they took it very seriously. Um, so the little boys woke up the jailer and woke up Michael and said, guys, this is what happened. And the jailer realized, I'm in the same boat as my prisoner now. So I might as well throw in my lot with him and help him escape. So they got word to Michael's followers and said, listen, you have to act quickly or else uh, it's going to be too late. So Michael's followers put on their swords, got dressed in monks' robes, and snuck into the imperial palace at daybreak. This is like the equivalent of party crashing at the White House. <laughs> <laughs> they sneak in there. No one notices it's early in the morning. Everyone's 
are dressed the same, they're tired. The Emperor Leo loved to sing. He was well known for it, especially in that literature of books, but he loved to sing. And at, at one point in the liturgy, in the very beginning, he loved to just belt it out. And everyone knew this. So they said, that's the signal. When he starts belting it out, then we know who to kill, uh, we attack. So early morning comes, it's Christmas morning, the service begins, Leo starts bowing, and the conspirators immediately block the doors, rip off their disguises, take out their swords, and they start attacking the emperor. The only problem was, it's dark, it's smoky, they're a little tired. They attack the wrong man. <laughs> they attack the officiating priest, too, as you would expect, well as singing. <laughs> now, Leo had a big, thick head of hair, and the priest who was being attacked knew this. He happened to be bald, good thing for him. So he whips off his, he had a, a cow, and he whips off the, the hat and says, Look, I'm not the emperor, I'm bald. Stop standing me. <laughs> uh, they do, but in the meantime, Leo, at this point, has grabbed the, a huge cross from the altar, and he's grabbed an incense burner, and he's swinging them around, <laughs> yelling out for his guards, who can't get there because the doors are being blockaded. One account says he defended himself for over an hour, which uh, I find hard to believe. But eventually, his, his arm gets uh, chopped off, he gets killed. The one thing he didn't tell them was he had the key to Michael's chains hidden on him. They killed him, they didn't suspect this. They went down and they knew they had to move quickly because if they don't crown Michael emperor right away, someone else will, will become emperor and then Michael's still in the dungeon. So they grab Michael, they can't find the key because it's on Leo's corpse. They don't know this, so they grab Michael, hustle him upstairs and in what is surely the most undignified formation in history. <laughs> They crowned him with the chains of his incarceration, still on his feet. 